哈喽，大家好，我是 Eric 长安万年。前两期我们一起了解了加拿大这个全能学霸 Jennifer 雇凶杀母、重伤父亲的这个案件，并且一起分析了其中的一些疑点。随着案发四天后， 2 0 1 0年的11月12号 ，Jennifer 身受重伤的父亲从昏迷中间苏醒过来，一切基本上已经真相大白了。那么下一步，警察就是想办法要让 Jennifer 去认罪。加拿大警方找来了一名名叫 William Goes 的警官，虽然网上啊对这个人介绍非常非常的少，但是我看了这段视频之后，我觉得这个人非常非常的厉害。为什么呢？我们一起看看这段视频。那么喜欢审。讯的朋友呢，应该会很喜欢今天的这段视频，因为今天的这段视频将会非常的技术流。好，我们一起看看吧。Okay. 同一个房间，同样的摆设，但是现在跟前两次啊，还上述一对于一个受害者的问讯不同，这回呢是针对一个嫌疑人的审讯。那么最开始需要做的工作有三项啊：宣读权利、打消顾虑和搞好关系。宣读权利是肯定，因为现在是嫌疑人了嘛，所以要告诉他你的权利是什么。但是 Jennifer 已经来过两回了，并且前两回他都全身而退了。所以一呢，他是对自己还蛮自信的啊，他觉得我可以逃脱过这这个惩罚。二是对整个的这个审问的这个流程啊，也比较了解了。并且现在这个审问的这个人啊换了，呃，如果需要他签署的什么文件也不一样的话，那么就很容易引起他的怀疑了，从而导致他可能会警警觉起来啊等等，甚至可能会导致他选择去找律师。那么怎么样才可以让他注意到有什么不同？我们看看。Um, so the same thing applies here today, okay? Now, do you understand what your rights are here today? 第一呢，就是从他最了解的东西开始。你之前不是已经啊签过两回我这个文件了吗？那么今天签的这个文件也是一样的。Do you understand what your rights are here today? Everybody has rights. Do you know what your rights are? As a citizen, do you know what your rights are? That you don't have to speak to the police. They they went through some things with you before. You don't have to give a statement if you don't want to. Do you understand that? No, I do. Okay, and it's your choice whether you give a statement or not. You understand that? That was on that form that they read out to you, and it said you that it's your choice. You understand that, though? I do. Know. Okay. All right.、Um, and what I tell everybody that I speak to is that. All of our rights are guaranteed, and they're guaranteed under the Charter of Rights and Freedoms, which states that when a person's been arrested or detained, well, they must be advised their rights to counsel or rights to a lawyer. So, first of all, you're not under arrest here, okay? You're not being detained. That door there, that's not locked. It's just closed to ensure our privacy, okay? So, if at any time you want to leave, please feel free to do so, okay? If any time you want me to stop these proceedings, just say so and I will. If at any time you did want to speak to a lawyer, you just have to tell me and you can speak to. 第一个权利呢是他现在还没有被逮捕嘛，所以来这边是他自己自愿来的。那么就是你想走就可以走。呃 ，Bill 这里跟他说，我相信这以以前的这些警察应该都告诉过你了，对吧？但实际上 ，Bill 作为一个警察，不管前面的警察有没有告诉过 Jennifer， 他这里该宣读的权利呢，他都得宣读，该完成的步骤他都得完成。但是加上这句话啊，他们都告诉过你了，那么谁记得真的？那警察都给那么老长的一个开场白，对吧？前面的两期，谁真的记得住那些话？他这么一说呢 ，Jennifer 就有可能会放松警惕啊，跟以前一样，那就没问题。Lawyer in private, we can phone a lawyer and you can speak to them privately on the phone. Do you understand that? Okay. Now, have you ever heard of legal aid? Okay. 第二个权利呢，就是他可以随时停止啊，去咨询律师，那么甚至可以要求律师在场啊，陪同这个审问。但是我们都知道，律师是审问人员的一个大敌啊，有律师在的话，大概率就可能会让 Jennifer 去闭嘴啊，什么都不要说，什么都不要配合，那么这样就很难审了。但是他的权利呢，还是必须得告诉他。所以 Bill 采取的这个方式呢，就是啊，我快速的跟你宣读你的权利啊，然后马上提起来一些无关紧要的一些事情啊，免费的什么法律援助，这个就是干扰对方的一个思维。那找律师的这个观念啊，不要就是深化下去啊，反倒说啊，你需不需要一个免费的一个法律援助啊，免费的律师啊，这个不重要嘛，对吧 ？Yeah, you've heard the term before. Do you know what it means? Okay, so legal aid lawyers are lawyers available to give people free legal advice. 
Okay, and they're available 24 hours a day uh, for people uh, at a police station, and they're available to everyone. And these lawyers give people free legal advice. Okay, so that's another option available to you here today. Do you understand that? Yes. And do you understand these rights? Yes. Okay. And do you wish to speak to a lawyer? 看到吧，重点都放在免费上面。啊，重大的刑事案件啊，谁会关心是否免费这个问题，对吧？那么作为心里有鬼的这个嫌疑人呢、啊，只会关心会不会找律师上，我觉得更可疑啊，等等这些事情，并且作为一个标准程序啊 ，Bill 还问他，哎，你要不要律师？但他问的其实很有技术性啊，他先问你明不明白你的权利，然后再问你你要不要律师。其实大家想想这两个问题、啊，问的很有技巧的。如果这两个问题顺序换一下的话，会怎么样？Well, I, I just advise people what the rights are, but I can't tell you that you should or you shouldn't. Okay, so that's fine. If you change your mind, let me know. Okay. Now,、um, as discussed before, okay, in relation to this case,、um, you don't have to say anything to the police in relation、uh, to this murder. Okay. Um, but whatever you do say may be given as evidence in court. Okay, and if it had anything to do with you, that evidence could be used against you. Do you understand that? You just have to say yes or no. Yes. yes. Okay.、Um, now we've never met before, right?、No. I just brought you from the front to the back here,、yes. and we didn't discuss the case.、Mm-hmm. No. Okay. So when when I meet somebody for the first time. Um, I have to let them know that I don't want what you've said to any other police officer in this case to influence you or make you feel like you even have to talk to me here today. Okay, and whatever you've said to date、uh, to anyone about this case, you don't have to repeat that, nor do you have to say anything further. Okay, but whatever you do say, that may be given as evidence. Do you understand that? Okay. Just tell me your understanding of what I've been telling you. 这个 Bill 说了这么大一套，其实就是告诉他你有沉默权。这个、问询一个证人和审讯一个嫌疑人，在权利上面最大的不同就是沉默权。因为是证人的话，你都来作证，你还沉默个毛，对吧？你不可能沉默嘛。但是嫌疑人呢，沉默权就是非常重要了。但是作为一个外行呢 ，Jennifer 肯定不知道这其中的这个利害关系啊。尤其是警察先是信息轰炸、啊，说了这么一大堆，然后再偷换了一个概念啊，说我不知道你跟其他的警察啊说过些什么，其他的警察跟你说过些什么。啊，也不想让别人去影响你啊，影响你的判断。但是啊，你有权利啊，你不想说，你就可以不说。实际上就是跟他说啊，你有沉默权啊。但是他把这个信息啊隐藏的非常好。Just tell me what you understand me to say in your own words. Take your time. That I don't have to say anything, but if I want a lawyer, I can have one. Yep.、Yeah. Yeah, and I don't want anything anybody else has said to you to make you feel like you have to even talk to me. I don't want them influencing anything that may have said previously. Do you know what I mean? Okay. okay I don't want you to feel forced into talking to me. Okay. All right. 你看嘛，这个套路玩的非常好啊，因为 Bill 不是说是正儿八经啊，一板一眼的跟对方在宣读这个权利，而是一直在玩花招。但是他呢，为了确保律师啊，对方律师不会在法庭上面找茬儿，所以这里呢，又让对方用自己的话啊去重复一遍、叙述一遍。刚才说了些什么 ？Jennifer 这是个被套路的死死的，他自己然后就重复了一遍，也没注意到这其中有自己实际上真的应该注意到一些东西的。那么 Bill 的套路还多着呢，我们接着看。And what's your future aspirations then? Okay, just hold on a second. Okay, we're we're having technical difficulties here. <laughs> okay, so that's why they interrupted me. What we're going to do is, if you don't mind holding tight there, I'm just going to move my equipment to the other room. Okay, and then I'll come over and we'll move over there next door. Okay. I'm just not comfortable being alone. Okay, I'm gonna be right here though. Okay. Yeah. If you have a problem, just knock on the door and I'll come right over. Okay. I'm, I'm just gonna be three seconds. I just have to take the、uh, stuff here, move it over there, and then I'll come again. Okay. Okay.
就这一出大家看懂了吗？其实 Bill 呢，他就是想换个房间啊。审讯室能有个毛技术性问题，对吧？但是为什么一开始不换呢？而是这个时候换？因为咱们都知道 ，Jennifer 已经来过两回了，这回的情况不一样。那我们又想不想让他意识到这个情况不一样了？所以用同一个房间啊，同样的摆设。同样的位置啊，来接待他，那误以为这次跟以前一样啊，他还是可以全身而退，因为前两次都全身而退了嘛。那么又必为什么又必须得要换呢？因为右边那个房间为什么不行呢？我们仔细的比较一下这两个房间有什么不同啊？第一，我不知道为什么右边的这个房间这个墙上会有两个画框，不知道这个画框里面是画还是照片啊？但是一般来说，为了保持这个审讯室的压迫感啊，审讯室一般都很小嘛，它也颜色也比较单一，它是不会有任何的装饰品的。啊，也没有窗户，就像左边的这个房间一样。第二呢，是右边这个房间啊，这个桌子的位置啊，太靠中间了。这个桌子在中间呢，就会一啊，它拉会，它会拉开两人的这个距离，因为桌子的存在，这两个人的距离太远了。当审讯员需要去施压，去靠近对方的这个时候，这个桌子会挡着路嘛，对吧？而左边的这个房间桌子的位置呢，就挪到这个角落去了。这样虽然看起来还挺远的，但实际上当需要的时候，审讯员可以马上。往前，这样就可以接近 Jennifer， 给他施压。第三呢，桌子的存在会让对方的这个心理上啊，因为他在哪儿嘛，就有一个可以介于防御的一个东西。第四呢，就是桌子它会遮挡一部分视线啊，呃，而左边的这个房间的这个位置安排呢 ，Jennifer 就完完全全的啊暴露在这个警察面前了，他也就无法去啊隐藏啊，也比较难防御。第三呢，是 Jennifer， 他现在坐这个位置啊，离门太近了。啊，离角落又太远，而左边房间里这样设置的话，只需要在施压的时候，警察稍微往前移动一点，啊，就把 Jennifer 压到角落了，而且挡住了他和门之间的这个通路。如果 Jennifer 被压到这个角落里面，因为后面的没有退路嘛，所以他这个压迫感呢就会成倍的增加。同时呢，因为警察挡着门，所以他心里就给他心里制造，我必须要解决面前的这个警察，我才能走，我才能离开的这种感觉。而他又怎么可能去解决面前这个警察呢？对吧？ So right now we're in、uh, the Sudford video room across the hall from the first one. By my computer now it's 2:52.、Um, the officer advised me, the detective cook, that we're having a problem with the other room. The video and audio went down. 听到吧？他说到前面啊，那个房间的录音录像设备坏掉了。你怎么会坏？我们刚刚听的好好的嘛，对吧？这就是套路，而且现在套路才刚刚开始。我们接着再看。从他们聊天这个状态来看，跟前几次相比的话，可能更加放松一些。你看他们这个身体里面。As far as that, did you do、uh, like competition skating or? Yeah. Okay. And how did you do with that? I was at the top of the pack, but I was in middle average. Yeah, sounds good though. But you did actually enjoy it. It was more than just going for、uh, competition. You enjoyed actually. I I, I was petrified of the competition. Okay. <laughs> All right. And tell me about the piano. When did you start with the piano? When I was four. Wow. Okay. And you're still doing it, I understand. Okay. And I hear you actually teach. Yeah, I taught a bit, and、yeah. I'm still working towards that final qualification. Okay. And what do you, what do you have to do to、uh, get that final qualification? I have, I believe, another three exams. Okay. And are the exams practical, or are they practical and practical,、uh, like practical and written? Written, okay. Your highest papers, you were still able to teach students. Yes. Yeah. Okay. What does the actual full papers give you? What will you be able to do with that? It's just a formality.、Uh, an achievement. Yes.、Yeah. Okay. Credentials. Okay.、Uh, can you charge more? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And do you have any students right now? Or? No. Okay. And why not?、Uh, the students I were teaching, they went to high school and lost interest. Okay. Yeah. Too big for panel. <laughs> yeah, I took it in grade school too, but、uh, I, I think I got I went to grade seven in it. I think like in when I was in grade seven, I stopped taking it, but、uh, I still remember swans on the lake. <laughs> Didn't know how to play that. That's about it. <laughs> 这个 Bill 啊，他厉害的地方啊，不只是在这些套路啊，在这些花招上面，他这个人的这个亲和力啊，也是顶级的。对于审问专家来说，这个 Building Rapport 啊，就是警察和被审问的这个嫌疑人建立起一个正常的
人与人之间的这个交流啊和关系呢是非常重要的一件事情。咱们再看这里啊，他们在这里才待着一会儿啊，这两个人其实已经可以谈笑风生了。你别管 Jennifer 现在心中是否真的慌的一批啊，至少他现在还笑得出来，对吧？当然，两个人心中呢肯定是各自在戒备的啊，各自有各自的想法，所以肯定不可能像啊真的。party 一样的那么聊天啊，但是作为对比看室内语言的话 ，Jennifer 现在这个状态呢，其实已经比前两次啊更加放松了。他手上的这个动作和这个紧锁在一起的这个脚踝啊，代表他还是紧张和戒备的。但是呢，他是可以正常的去跟这个警察聊天的。在后面的这一个小时中间，这个审问的 Bill 啊，跟他聊了很多他的过去啊、他男朋友啊、感情史啊等等这些问题啊。这个阶段，一方面呢是看他说的跟以前说的有没有什么不同；二呢就是巩固一下他这个人设。至于什么是人设，请大家去看我之前那个 Jeff Pearson 那个视频啊，那个这里我就不在这里赘述了。同时呢，因为现在是快进，我们顺便看一下 Jennifer 这个身体语言，因为她现在完全暴露在审问员的面前，所以总体上呢，她有非常强的这个暴露感。他感觉自己什么都藏不住，他这个手呢，大部分时间也没有抬起来，所以现在压力也没有很大，没有到要防御的这个地步。但是这个脚不停的动啊，总是指向门的这个方向，也很明显的表现出啊，他不想待在这里。I didn't say that. I said that I asked them why, like when they separated, my parents away from me. I asked them why couldn't I be with them, and they're just like you cooperated, just co- keep cooperating. Okay, so you're saying you made that comment to a relative that they liked you, though. Why? I don't. Is that what you meant, or what was? I don't understand. I don't really understand. Okay. Did you feel like they liked you? No, they were. I, if you have a gun to your head, I don't think they they liked you very much. Okay, but they didn't shoot you. No.、Okay. Why did they not shoot you? I I don't know. When I when they took my parents away, I asked to go with them, and they're like, "Shut up." But you must have thought of this. You must be thinking. I I still do, and I. I spoke to the therapist about it. Okay. And wh- why do? You, what have you come up with in your mind? Why? The only thing they they could say was they kept saying that you know I cooperated and to shut up, and to cooperate, keep cooperating. Did you feel you like your parents didn't cooperate? I don't know. Okay. Is there something that they didn't cooperate with? They were trying. That's what I mean. Like so, really, they did cooperate. When you think about it, there was no money to be found. No. They told the truth. Dad said he had sixty dollars, right?、Um, so there wasn't anything that he wasn't cooperating with. I don't know. 在搞好关系。打消顾虑啊，宣读权力，然后巩固人设之后，目前这个审问专家 Bill 啊，他开始进入这个 confrontation stage， 就是一个对峙、攻击的一个阶段。先找出事件中间最能定下基调的一个疑点。在 Jennifer 这个事件中间，很明显就是为什么你毫发无伤，但是你的父母一死一伤。I thought that he was. Everyone was cooperating. That's what they kept saying. No one get hurt if he just cooperated. Okay. I'm trying to figure out where they didn't cooperate. Is there any time that you believe they didn't cooperate? I wasn't with them the entire time. I was only with them for a short period of time.、Okay. But they never said. They never lied to them. I guess is what I'm getting down to. That you remember during any interaction you had. Understand it? No. No. Like, do you feel like they cooperated? Okay. Now, do you think there's any reason why they tied you up and didn't tie your parents up? I don't know. Does that seem odd to you? Why does it seem odd? Because I was away, I was pretty much separated from them the whole time. 
And does it make sense that they would leave a witness behind? That they were going to kill somebody? Does that make sense? Yes, I think. Just thinking about it. Would it make sense for somebody that was going to kill somebody to leave a witness behind that could describe them? Does that make common sense for killers? It's not. What do you think? 因为这个桌子不在之后啊 ，Jennifer 少了一个掩体，一个隔绝他和警察的一个东西。这样呢，他就更加明显，更加暴露，很难的像之前那样子去假悲伤。你看他那个假哭。同时，你注意到 Jennifer 在说话这个出现哭腔之后啊，这一次这个警察没有给他纸巾啊，因为给了他，他就会像之前一样那样低头用脸捂着用纸巾捂着脸嘛。所以干脆就不给你，就让你哭，你有眼泪你就流，然后看你能不能哭得出来。Uh, when you say they kept saying, who kept saying? When she first went out, did you go out with her? 在下面这个阶段啊，这个审问员像机关枪一样，以非常快的这个节奏问了 Jennifer 一大堆问题。我们看看。Do some of them live on your street, or is that your dad's side? And your mom? Do your mom and dad sleep in the same room, or do they sleep apart?、Um, the supper is it usually made for a certain time every night?、Uh, what do you wear to bed? Because you obviously weren't walking around with just your bra all day. When you went down to see your mom, what did you talk about? While you're downstairs, at any time, do you make sure that the house is secure? When they tied your hands, what kind of、uh, style did they tie them? What kind of build? 这段快速的问问题持续了大概半个小时嘛，大家应该能感觉出来，问的这些问题啊，大部分都问的很飘啊，就什么都问，而且跳跃的非常厉害。并不是以时间的顺序或者怎样的一个逻辑啊来推进的。第二呢，是他跟测谎的时候差不多问的问这些问题啊，有一部分是不重要的，有一部分呢甚至会为了打击对方的信心，打击就问你的隐私什么，专门问的。那么还有一部分题是他不可能知道答案的。那当然了，中间肯定也夹杂着一些审问人员真的想问的问题。那么这么做的目的呢？一呢是行为分析啊，不同的问题有不同的目的嘛。有一些呢是观察他，看他怎么回答自己不知道的这些东西的时候的反应；有些呢是看他回答啊，他自己不太想回答的这些问题啊，看他是什么反应；有一些呢真的就是看他撒谎时的身体的这个反应了。呃，二呢是为了检查一下他的口供有没有与之前啊有没有什么不同的地方，因为问的很没有逻辑嘛，所以他很难连贯起来。那么如果有不同的地方，他编造的时候啊，他。想的时候，他没有想的特别的清楚的话，这个时候呢，就会出现这种前言不搭后语的情况。三呢，就是打击他的这个信心，让他这个脑子越乱越好。四呢，其实这种问问题的方式啊，会让他感觉到特别疲劳，他这个疲劳感就会陡增，脑子呢也就会越来越跟不上。大家看他的这个动作，实际上就看得出来，他这个头啊越来越低，越来越低，越来越低，身体呢也就抱得越来越紧，这就是给他这个压迫感越来越强，让他自己觉得。自己越来越没有信心，所以可见这个审问人员这个工作其实做的非常的到位，做的很好。Obviously, everything is so important that night that it's probably the most important night of your life, and I know it's tough to keep going over, but it's important. Okay,、uh, I'm just gonna step out for a second. Okay, did you need anything? 下面就开始到了这个审问施压的这个准备阶段了。审问中有很多个阶段啊，往往第一步呢就是从这个审问专家先暂时先离开，然后最标准的操作呢，其实离开有个十分钟、二十分钟之后，他会抱着一个文件夹，他走回来，然后给对方有一种啊，我有有是不是有什么新的信息，啊，有没有什么之前没有聊到的一些东西的这种感觉。那我们再接着看。The reason. Why I'm here today, okay, is that I'm an expert, okay, in what we call truth verification. Okay, I'm not a homicide detective. Okay, although I work on a lot of homicides. Okay, so my job in any case, and anybody that's a witness in this case, I have to speak to. Okay, after they've been interviewed originally by anybody else. Okay, and so what it's about is truth verification. Okay, so basically, all my studies come into interviewing and uh, detecting deception,、uh, determine if somebody's telling the police the truth. Okay, so some of the ways is obviously I count on my experience, right? I talk to thousands of people. Okay, 
and I basically know when somebody's not being straightforward with me, okay? I can tell by the language they use, how they answer the question, their body language, how they treat the question, that something's wrong here, okay? This doesn't make sense. 先说自己的这个经验和自己的这个能力，说的角度呢是一种感觉在安慰你啊，这种角度来说，那我这么牛，所以你可以放心啊，你这个案子一定会水落石出的。但是这种话对于心中有鬼的这个压力人来说，他感到的这个压力就会倍增啊，他甚至有可能会感觉到害怕。Okay. Okay, so we have、uh, computer programs, and one of the ones that we utilize in these cases is an analysis program called. Event probability analysis. Okay, and what we do is we feed everything into the computer. Basically, the computer I type it out and we feed it in, and it takes you scan it in actually, and it takes a copy of everything that's been said, and it analyzes、uh, what a person has said. Okay, and based on what they say, it will tell us where the areas of deception are. Okay. When something's missing、uh, that they're not telling us, okay, areas of concern and、uh, areas that are flat out not truthful, okay, and areas that they you come back with a result that says not plausible. 然后呢，就是不停强调警察的这个资源和所掌握的这个信息。接着这个 Bill 用了一个复杂化的一个 Dawson technique。他说的这个软件是有的，但使用起来。嗯，应该不是他说的那个样子。他说的这个感觉是电脑会分析你说的话啊，然后会分析出其中哪一些是假话，这个太夸张了啊，也有可能是我孤陋寡闻吧，反正我没有见过。我理解的这个软件呢，更加像是一个基于大数据啊啊，基于算法的，它有点像。就原理，它可能跟淘宝想要知道你想买什么，和抖音知道你想要看什么类似，是这种感觉的东西。And you're already aware of how many days the police were at your house, right? Days on on days on days, and when they were there, okay, they're not just there、uh, taking a couple pictures or anything, okay, okay. They're going over every hair fiber, every skin cell, every bit of blood. The other thing we do is we have to reach out to what we call modern technology, okay. So there's some of the things that we utilize as satellite. Okay, now are you? Do you know what satellite can do? We can go back and obtain satellite information. Okay, and essentially the satellite's a 24-hour video that's going on,、uh, you know, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, right? It's recording information, pulling in on that through satellites and heat-seeking.、Uh, Uh, apparatuses that tell you what's going on inside, right? Okay. If people are moving around in a house,、um, it's like an X-ray. Okay. And basically, we're able to tell, you know, are those movements, are those actions, that number of people consistent with the story that we've been told? Okay. And if they're different, why are they different? Is what what our question becomes, right? This part is too abstract. From the moon. 能像 X 光啊，或者像热源感应这种仪器一样去扫描人的房子，而且你还能查过去的这个历史，这个太夸张了。不过看 Jennifer 不停的揉自己这个头发，她这个揉自己的头发揉了十几分钟了，这招对她来说还是挺管用的。那总体而言，前面这一大段呢，就是告诉她，我们知道很多比你想象中的要多，从而增加对方的这种不确定感和降低他的这个信心。Now, 然后呢，就是要开始所谓的这种 positive confrontation， 就是积极对峙的这个阶段。这个阶段呢，往往以一个就是非常模式非常固定的一句话开始。这句话要求是要很简单、很肯定，但是呢，它又不是非常明确的。就最典型的一句话呢，就是说，我们掌握的证据和调查的结果显示出，你没有毫无保留的。告诉我们真相，这句话说出来啊，一般要求审问员使用 pause technique， 就是你不说话，沉默盯着对方，让对方主动的去打破这种尴尬的这个局面。那无辜的人听到警察这么说之后，就会知道自己觉得自己被冤枉了嘛，他就会变得情绪化啊，或者说感觉到很很困惑，干什么？从而呢，他就会在下面对于警察后面要说的这个话展现出浓厚的这个兴趣。有鬼的人呢？他或者就会长篇大论的这个辩论啊、辩解、转移注意力，或者呢就完全不知道该说什么。
I can tell you that nothing surprises me in this job, okay? I am well aware that anybody on this earth is capable of making a mistake, okay? I don't care who they are. I don't care um, if they're a priest. I don't care if they're a school teacher. I don't care what the situation is. Given a certain set of circumstances, everyone has the capability, Jennifer, of making a mistake, doing the wrong thing, okay? Um, the key, though, when I talk to people is when they made a mistake, Okay, that's one thing, right? The key is to not keep making the same mistake, okay? And to get that information out and get it off their chest, okay? You understand what I'm saying? Okay? So, at the end of the day, from this case, and I can tell you I've spent literally a week on this case going over information after information, accessing all these sources, speaking to every other expert on the case, okay? And at this point, Jennifer, I know that you've not been truthful with the police, okay? You've not told us everything that you know purposely, okay? And that you've left information out, okay? There's a number of inconsistencies in what you've told the police, okay? One of the things you have to remember is that your dad was there, okay? And your dad had a front row seat to all of this, okay? And your dad's a very smart man, okay? And he has a very clear perception of what's going on. 比如我这里这个操作，嗯，并非标准。我想他应该可能已经是非常确定就是 Jennifer 了。所以在说完那句啊，你说的这些东西啊，有些东西不太合理之后，他并没有停下来给 Jennifer 去做反应的这个时间去回答啊什么的，直接就转到 Jennifer 的父亲那边去了。我提到他的父亲，一呢是给他心中要种下一颗对于未知信息的这个恐惧的这个种子。因为这个时候，其实我并不是很确定 Jennifer 是否知道他爸已经醒过来了，但是他肯定不知道他爸说过什么。他爸跟警察说过什么？警察肯定不会告诉他的。第二呢，就是为了流程中的这个第二个步骤啊，叫做 theme development， 英文直译呢叫做主题发展。这个在中文中间太难理解了。嗯，它是什么意思？我跟大家举个例子吧。比如说现在有一个犯罪的一个事情发生了吧？啊，很糟糕的一件事情，对吧？但是呢，我我相信你是一个好人，肯定都是对方的错才导致了这次意外的发生，对吧？这这句话呢，就是很典型的一个 theme development， 在这个阶段会做的、会说的一句话。其实从本质上讲啊，就是通俗一点的说啊，这种方法的内核呢，就是可以叫它好人推论法，并且在这个阶段最常用的是 ego up technique 啊，就是增加自尊法，自自尊而不是自信啊。呃，像是比如说啊，你忍了这么多年，真的很厉害啊，没人做得到的。还有就是 shift blame 啊，责任转移，比如说啊，这都不怪你啊，我知道都是他的错。前面警察花了很长的时间给对方这个设定这个人设，现在就要开始起作用了。在这个过程中间，审问人员会想着法的给嫌疑人找理由啊，想办法去提高他们的这个自尊，巩固他们的人设。然后呢，在后面一个阶段，又会质疑他们，去推翻他的这个人设，让他们变成一个坏人。那么只要这个人设立得足够好，一般人呢都不会想要放弃去推翻掉啊自己在别人心中那个美好的一个形象嘛。所以呢，这个时候呢，就会让审问人员有机可乘。You've told the truth, but you haven't told all the truth. We're getting into where, you know, you've spent a considerable amount of time in the last seven years telling half truths. Okay, and I can understand why. Okay, you've had a tough life. Okay, what's happened to you to me equates to abuse. Okay, and all the stresses that you've had and forced to lie, I can understand why you did it. Okay, but you're in another situation here where you're under another tremendous amount of stress. Okay, and that stress is brought on by those same factors that brought on stress before. Okay, the number one thing that brings on stress to you is when you're not truthful, right? That hurts you, right? Okay, and it doesn't feel good inside, does it? It breaks down the person that you are. 
Because at the end of the day, you're a good person. I know that. You've got a good heart. Okay? In this case, though, you've made mistakes. Okay? And you're involved in this. I know that. And I know why this has happened. Okay? You have spent your whole life trying to live up to expectations that you can't meet. Okay? And it's stressed the hell out of you. You're a 24-year-old woman being treated like a 15-year-old. Okay? What, you've never done anything that terrible in your life, but you're being treated like you have. You're not being treated like the adult that you are. Yes, you made some mistakes. Big deal. You're not the first person that has gone out and not told their parents that they're dating a guy because in your culture they don't accept it. I understand that. I've talked to people in here that have kept that secret for their whole life from their parents. Okay, so that's not abnormal, but that puts a lot of stress on you, right? That's not easy for you, is it? No. Now, what we need to get down to here today, Jen, is what really happened. You need to tell me what went on. Because you know who was in that house that night. You do, Jen. There's no question about that. 走到这个阶段之后，最重要的一个事情就是 handle denials， 就是怎么去处理对方的否认，因为对方肯定会否认，但是我们不能让他否认。人的心理就是这个样子，因为谎话说多了就会变成真的嘛，对吧？如果你让他否认的越来越多呢，就会增强他的信心。所以什么人在这个阶段呢？每一次当对方去否认的时候，他会不停的打断对方的否认，去强化说。OK， you have actually given an improper description of the person you were dealing with. Upstairs, number one, you falsified the whole description of that person. We know that, okay? We know that, okay? He, yes, you did, Jen. Okay, you did. You made a a mistake here, and we got to get to the bottom of that. That person did not exist in that house that night. I know that. Jennifer 的这个反抗实际上非常的微弱，小女孩的这个心理抗压能力还是比较差的啊。她对于对方可能有的这个证据啊，她不清楚嘛，她被吓住了。正常在这个阶段，我们会听到嫌疑人说啊，你能让我说两句吗？对吧？啊，我不知道啊，我没有撒谎啊，我知道的我都说了。但是根据她说话这么小声，就可以听出来她的信心其实已经被面前这个警察摧毁的差不多了。Okay, we've done our homework, so we need to get down to why you have purposely told us. A false description of number one. Okay, no, Jen, it's totally wrong, and it was done on purpose. Okay, to mislead us. Okay, because you're involved in this. 在沈源不停的发展这种好人坏人啊这种故事的这个推论的时候，像 Jennifer 这种挫败感很强的这个嫌疑人。他在开启不了反击模式的这种情况之下，他就有可能会开启这个躲避的模式。表现形式呢，就是我既然插不上话，那我就干脆我不说话了。那、呃、比如他有可能会注意力不集中啊，他脑子可能就会开始想一些别的一些事情。比如大部分人就可能会想，哎呀，如果我认了的话，那我得判上几年啊？十年以上啊？那不行不行，绝对不能认。或者是哎，哎呀，不行不行，我快撑不住了，我得赶紧找律师。不过他想，不管他想要想什么。我们都不能让他去想，必须得把他的注意力拉回来。所以下面我们会看到，除了这个警察跟嫌疑人越坐越近，并且这个身体还保持前倾啊，保持一个压迫以外，当 Jennifer 出现注意力不集中的这个时候，守门员会向他招手，把他的注意力重新拉回来。Okay, you cannot deny that. Okay, you cannot deny that. We know now. Okay, so let's just get it out on the table. You've made a mistake. I know that. Okay. But you can't live with this any longer than this. Your 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 buddy, nervous wreck over this thing. This thing, if you could take it back, I know that you would. If you could go back to that day and play this all over again, it would be different. Okay. But you need to right now know that we know that you're involved. But what we also know is that you're a good person. Okay. That's made a mistake here, right? You you made some bad decisions, okay? And it's you know how you made the bad decisions that not talking, telling your parents what's up. You don't want to do that with us, okay? You don't want to do that with the police, do you? Yeah, but you don't want to mislead me, do you? No. Okay, so. 
再往后面的一步呢，就是观察对方的 passive mood， 就是挫败的这个信号。一般来讲，最常见的挫败信号有三种，一个呢就是哭啊，哭呢这就是后悔啊，愧疚感爆发了嘛。二呢就是提要求，最常见的一个要求呢，你给我一根烟抽。那像 Chris Watts 那个案件里面，他是想要跟他爸见一面。我还看过一个案件，中间就是这个嫌疑人想要警察，你给我换一个称呼啊！警察换了之后，他随后他就撂了。三呢是在审讯界有一个叫做 defeatist posture 啊，叫投降姿势。这个看起来大概就是可能是这样子的，或者是这样子的，就手放在脖子，或者是放在头上，啊，身体缩在一起，然后这个腿啊不动，或者说比较放松。And in your case, all that's happened here is self-preservation. Eighteen months ago, Jen, you chose your family over Daniel, okay? But you gave up Jen in the process. You gave up yourself to this whole thing. There was no Jen anymore. The Jen that just wanted to do teach piano, that wasn't good enough. The Jen that just wants a normal nine-to-five job. That's not good enough. And Jen was in a state of depression, backed into a corner. And what it came down to is one thing: self-preservation. Self-preservation overrules anything in life. Okay. At the end of the day, it's like your life is being choked out of you. That's what's been happening for the last seven years, and basically. The grip on your throat, on your life, has shrunk and tightened up to a point where either you do something about it, or it's the end of Jen. And you diminish to a point where the only thing you could do is fight back for once. And that's what's happened here again. We know that. We know that. And I again, I'm surprised it took this long. A 24-year-old young woman being treated as a prisoner in her own home. I can't imagine. Like the rules that they have are for 12-year-olds, not for somebody twice that age. Yes, their intentions might have been good, but they're not realistic. They're not Dan, were they? Jen, their expectations weren't realistic, were they? You couldn't live up to them, could you? You tried to, right? Am I right? Yeah. And finally, you had to bite back, right? You had no other choice. You felt like you had no other options. You thought of everything else, including killing yourself, to make this change, right? Right? Okay, it happened. Yes, the guys came in. Okay, but you were involved. That's what the difference is here. Okay, right? A lot of what you said happened, but a lot of it that you said didn't happen. Okay. Okay, but it's what you're not saying that's important here. You were part of setting this plan in motion, right? You were behind this. Right? You have to get it off your chest, Jen. It's killing you. Get it off your chest, and we're going to talk it out here. We're going to understand, and we're going to get this pressure off you because that's what you need right now. Do the right thing now, Jen. We already know you're not going to surprise me here. Okay, I already know what the answer is. And I can't let. I can't stand to see you go through this any longer. To me, it was a form of abuse here, because you can't do that to a person. You can't. This is Canada. We're in the 21st century here. You cannot take everything out of a person. You can have expectations for your kids, but you can't expect them to do everything the way you want it. Okay? Jennifer, you don't need to live with this pain anymore. Let it in. Look at me, Jim. Let's be honest with each other. 
I've been nothing but honest with you here today, and I hope people will do the same with me. I'm here to listen. Ken? It's not worth it anymore. It's hurting you. What have you I need to know the details. I can't even say. But I can tell you one thing is that we already know, so you can't change that. I know you did, but it got too far ahead of you, right? You didn't see, you didn't think this far ahead, did you? But once they started, once they came in, you couldn't stop it, could you? Could you? Jen? Hmm? I know. Why didn't they stop for you? Hmm? I don't know who they were. But you were part of the planning, right? You have to tell me that part, and then we're going to work through it together. Do you know what I'm saying? You didn't want this. To, you wanted to stop it. You have to prove that to me now. Because at the end of the day, we have to stop this from happening to someone else. Right? Jen, we're going to have to deal with it one step at a time, okay? I'm going to be honest with you. 这里其实 Jennifer 已经几乎要着了，但是他意识到了之后又给着不回去了。同时呢，这个投降的这个姿势啊已经出现了，大家可以看到。所以他现在的这个状态啊是理智尚存，他明白自己搞不好下半辈子就可能要在监狱里面度过了。他也知道他现在没有办法击败面前这个警察，他感觉到极度的沮丧，极度的疲劳。实际上，马后炮的说，如果说这个警察再从帮助他的这个角度上多说几句话，他刚刚用 reframing technique 转移一下，他担心惩罚的这个点啊，这个很好，但是他只说了一句，如果再多说几句的话，他搞不好就真的有可能会招了。Bill 呢，这一段显得稍微有点点着急，他一直都按流程走的挺标准的，但是这里他忘了，就是按照流程问出那个 alternative question 了，就是这个技法通俗一点，就是坏人好人法。那么最典型的话术就是，我知道你不想啊啊，你只是意外的犯了一个错的一个好人啊，但是你不说呢，我就只能觉得你是一个禽兽不如、弑父杀母的坏人了。像他就可以说哦，我知道你是好人，所以我是真心的想要帮助你。Jennifer 现在心里纠结的这个点，我放在最后一期视频中间，跟他心里的这个分析啊，和他的这个行为分析放在一起跟大家说啊，但是很明显啊，他已经离招供不远了。我们接着看。I need to know what you did. 他现在这里这个姿势就是一个更典型的一个投降姿势了，很标准那个投降姿势。那么根据这个审问专家后来的证词啊 ，Jennifer 这里是真的首次真的哭出眼泪了，所以两个挫败的信号，呃，投降姿势和哭都出现了。我们看看 Jennifer 的证词。Okay. So we're supposed to take the whole family out? No, just me. What went wrong? 嗯 ，Jennifer 这里给出了一个令人很诧异的一个供词啊，就很明显，这话一说出口，就意味着，首先他认了这些人就是他招来的，但是他说他们是来杀他的。他杀死他的父母是一个意外，这又是怎么回事？就实在不好意思，因为这个视频已经很长了，我怕做不完，所以我在这里就先结束了。那么下期我们再看他到底都招了些什么。同时呢，我会跟大家一起啊研究具体的去分析一下 Jennifer 这个人。那么好了，感谢大家看这个视频，这回的视频有点太技术流了，不知道大家喜不喜欢，我们评论区聊聊看吧。好，我是 Eric 长安万年，评论区再见啦，拜拜。